For 35 years, scientists have studied American alligators at Tom Yaki Wildlife Center, a protected habitat that offers researchers a unique view of these mysterious reptiles. Their findings in a one-of-its-kind study stemming more than three decades shatter conventional scientific understanding about growth and reproduction of the American alligator. The kind of a dogma has been for years that crocodilians, reptiles in general, exhibit indeterminate growth. They grow until they die. Until this recent study, we have about 35 years worth of data to conclude that, at least at our site, animals do stop growing. We have animals that Phil first caught and tagged back in 1981 that we caught again last year, 2015, 2016, that still um, are still the same exact length they were 35 years ago or so. But one of the kind of the interesting things we found on the side was that, again, one of the older dogmas was that in crocodilians or alligators maybe, that the, the middle-aged females, the ones in the kind of the prime of their lives, uh, create the largest clutches, let me say the, uh, the most number of eggs laid in the nest, and, then the, and those eggs have the highest fertility as compared to the, the newer females that are just starting out and the older females that are kind of going offline, so to speak. But what we found is, is that we have females we know that are probably in their 60s, 60s that are probably pushing 70 years old that are still nesting and they have large clutches of very fertile eggs. And so either that dogma is wrong or that you know, middle age is somewhere in the 60s and 70s. One of the most unique things about the Yawkey study is the longevity of it. No other place has a data set this, this robust and this long, long term. The center is a really a unique place to work on alligators for a few reasons. One is it's a population that's been unhunted for almost 100 years, so the population is relatively pristine in terms of uh, harassment by human beings. Number two, um, the, uh, the site itself is bordering on the northern limit of the alligator's distribution, so it's kind of a northern part of the, of the range. Uh, not much is known about alligators in this northern climate. And even though it's you know, just a few hours drive from here to Georgia or Florida, the climate is a little bit different and it can affect things like behavior and growth in alligators. Um, and thirdly, and most importantly, is we have a long-term data set on alligators at this site. Phil Wilkinson, who um, worked here in the late 70s up until today, has created a, a, a database of alligator uh, biology, growth, nesting, and so forth that's unparalleled anywhere in the world, to my knowledge. And so it allows us to look at things that most other folks that study crocodilians can't look at, including things like growth and aging. So it's very unique. Nobody had a growth curve on alligators, period. We had been working with alligators here and catching them in the late 70s and early 80s. Now we've got animals that we, do we know that they got to a certain size and they never got any bigger, just like me. I might get fatter, but I don't, and they do that too, but they don't get any taller or longer. The real beginning of, of usefulness for this business was that first growth study. And we got, we got you know, graphs that showed at, at a certain size, a mean size, uh, animals on this area will be a certain age. By having that information, we could go forward and capture animals at nest sites and come up with some, when we had recaptures, have some idea of how old she was. And so we're looking at how long they can, they can reproduce in their lifetime, that's one thing. Whether they, as they get older, do their, does their reproduction diminish in quantity or quality or anything like that? And so far we're not seeing any sign much of that at all. We're seeing old animals putting out the same number of eggs and they're just as viable as the ones they had when they were younger. So I think, I kind of like to think of them as being like a big old oak tree. They drop acorns every so often when the weather's right, and one day they don't, and that's the end of it. It's always real pleasing to me when we mark one of these guys and find him 15 or 20 or 30 years later, 29 years, one of them. Nowhere else in the United States has a data set quite like this. And what that long-term marked population has allowed us to do is piggyback onto that with other research projects using the same animals for various other things, all the way from uh, toxicology to nesting ecology to uh, movement and uh, growth rates. So there's a wide variety of things that have used this data set of alligators. Based on uh, research done here over the years uh, by DNR biologists and by Clemson University researchers, 
Uh, it's allowed us to look at numerous things that we do with our management on a daily basis. How our water level management in the ponds affects alligator movement. Uh, how does drought affect uh, where alligators nest each year? Uh, there's a whole variety of things that uh, can be drawn from this data. A lot of it hasn't been processed yet, but eventually it'll give us a bigger picture idea of these movements. Uh, for instance, uh, one project that's using satellite telemetry on alligators here done through Clemson University uh, is showing us are our areas big enough refuges to protect these animals? Are they moving off and on the property and are available to hunters in the outside? So that's just one example of how these can be used in our management techniques. The fortunate thing is the information that we generated from that can be used for conservation purposes. For example, we have students in South Carolina now at Clemson University, in fact, doing research on alligator population biology, how to estimate populations in South Carolina specifically. And she um, can use the data we have on growth and on longevity for her, for her population models. Help her determine the detectability of animals in the wild, help her determine uh, how long animals are in the population, a variety of things that can then be turned over to the DNR and other management agencies to help them make more uh, informed decisions about how to conserve the species.